Welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to put on our put on our energy charge hats and we're going to learn about allosteric control of glycolysis. Allosteric control of glycolysis. So we're still looking at glycolysis, but the good news about this is there are only three enzymes that are allosteric in glycolysis. So let's let let's make a, a, a let's make a a group over here. This will be for hexokinase, right? That's the first enzyme in glycolysis. And if you remember, it's the one that takes glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Also, we have phosphofructokinase 1, right? And that's the enzyme that takes fructose 6-phosphate and converts it to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And then we have pyruvate kinase, right? And that's the enzyme that takes phosphoenol pyruvate and converts it to pyruvate. Okay, so now what we need to talk about is how are these enzymes controlled? And what you're going to find is, and, I, and, and you should, if you haven't watched the video already, you should watch the video on energy charge. And I talk a lot about allosteric control in there. And I'm going to use a lot of terms that I use in that video. So you might, you might want to watch that video first. But ultimately, energy charge is sort of going to dictate the allosteric control of these three enzymes. Okay, so if I, if, if I think about it, right, if I, if I just ate a meal, right, glycolysis is going to be running full force, right? Because, you, you know, let's say I ate a sweet potato, right? I love sweet potatoes. There's sugar in there, and so it's going to be catabolizing glycolysis, so glycolysis is going on and on. You know, I, I, I produce my NADH, right? And that goes into the electron transport chain, right? And it produces ATP. So I've got, you know, I've got, let's see, I've got, I've got elevated ATP, right? I've got elevated, elevated NADH, right? All right. So, so all of my reduced cofactors and high energy molecules are are present in high amounts, right? And so, if they're present in high amounts, do I really need to be doing glycolysis full force? And the answer is no, right? If I already have all these things in the cell already, I don't need to be, um, you know, producing more NADH. And certainly the enzyme that does that is, is what? It's, it's glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And certainly ATP is produced by phosphoglycerate kinase and um, pyruvate kinase. So if, if, if I've got ATP and I've got NADH, I don't need to be... I don't need to be running glycolysis. In fact, if, if these things are present, you're more or less going to have... Um, uh, glycolysis running backwards, and that's gluconeogenesis, and we'll do that in another video. Okay, so let's think about my low energy charge molecules. Low energy charge, so low, are going to be things like they're going to be things like phosphate, ADP, AMP, NAD plus. Those are generally going to be the low energy charge molecules I I'm concerned with with respect to glycolysis. And if you think about it, if I haven't eaten in a while, so I, if, I'm, if I've been fasting, all these things are going to be accumulating because I'm not really producing as much ATP anymore. I'm not producing as much NADH. Instead, I'm, I'm wasting the NADH in the respiratory chain. It's getting reoxidized to NAD. And the ATP I'm, I'm using for things like muscle contraction, and it's hydrolyzing it to ADP. And if, if, the, if the nucleophilic acyl substitution of ATP is happening on the beta phosphate, I'm, of course, generating AMP. Okay, so having said that, if, let's say I, um, you know, I, I, I haven't eaten in a while. So I've accumulated phosphate. Well, it turns out, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to do the allosteric activators in blue, and I'm going to do the allosteric inhibitors in red. Okay, so it turns out that one of the allosteric activators of hexokinase is phosphate, inorganic phosphate. And it makes sense, right? If I have all these low energy charge molecules accumulating, it needs I need to make more energy. I need to re return ADP back to ATP. I need to power ATP synthase, right? So if I've got a lot of phosphate lying around, lying around it means that glycolysis needs to speed up. And so hexokinase needs to be activated. So phosphate does that role, right? Well, if we, if we look at the reaction of hexokinase, right, it's turning glucose 6-phosphate, or excuse me, it's turning glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, right? 
Well, if I have a lot of glucose 6-phosphate around, it probably means that, well, hexokinase is a little too active, right? You know, if, it, if, hexo, if there's a lot of glucose 6-phosphate, it means hexokinase has been really active. Well, if there's too much glucose 6-phosphate, it probably needs, means I need to slow hexokinase down. And it turns out that glucose 6-phosphate is an allosteric inhibitor, is an allosteric inhibitor of of hexokinase. So remember, glucose 6-phosphate looks like this. It looks like this. So glucose 6-phosphate, when it binds to the allosteric side, hexokinase, it shuts it off. Okay. Now let's look at phosphofructokinase 1. And first we'll look at the allosteric activators. And again, if, if, if I... If, if, if let's say I, I've been fasting, I need some more energy, right? Because I, I've obviously haven't eaten in a while, so I need to make the energy, right? And likely, if if I if I haven't eaten in a while, you know, I haven't been running, you know, I, I haven't been producing a lot of NADH, I haven't been producing a lot of ATP, so there's been ATP hydrolyzed, so likely I've had I have a lot of ADP and AMP floating around. And it turns out that both these molecules, AMP and ADP, are both allosteric activators. They are both allosteric activators of PFK. And remember in that video that I told you to watch, it's the video on allosteric, um, I said that a lot of times opposite molecules, so AMP, ADP are low energy charge. So, so if, if they're inhibitor, or excuse me, if they're activators, then probably the high energy charge molecule is an inhibitor. And it turns out that that's in fact the case. ATP allosterically inhibits phosphofructokinase, right? Because if, if, if I've got lots of ATP present, right, it probably means that glycolysis has been going full force. And if I have ATP, I don't need any more ATP, right? So to save energy, just shut glycolysis down. And it turns out that phosphofructokinase is the main regulatory enzyme of glycolysis. So if I, if I don't need to run glycolysis, then PFK is the prime target for shutting glycolysis down. I turn off PFK, I shut down glycolysis. And there's one more allosteric inhibitor of PFK, and that molecule is citrate. And when we look at the TCA cycle, we'll get more detail on citrate. But citrate essentially looks like this. It looks like this. And citrate is the initial substrate that's formed by citrate synthase in the TCA cycle. Okay. So if you think about it, if I've got lots of citrate around, it probably means that there was a lot of acetyl-CoA around. And what you'll find is that when you do the TCA cycle, citrate synthase makes citrate ultimately from acetyl-CoA. So if I'm running glycolysis a lot, I'm going to be producing a lot of acetyl-CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And if I got a lot of acetyl-CoA, there's going to be a lot of citrate, right? So if I've got a lot of citrate, it probably means that I'm in high energy charge. And if I'm in high energy charge, I can shut down glycolysis because I don't really need it at that time. So citrate will feed back and allosterically inhibit PFK. Okay. So now we'll look at pyruvate kinase, right? And just remember, PFK is the main regulatory enzyme. So if I shut down PFK, I really shut down glycolysis, right? Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to look at pyruvate kinase. And much in, much in the same manner that we've talked about before, ADP, ADP is an allosteric activator of pyruvate kinase. So if I have, if I've been actively hydrolyzing ATP, I need more. So pyruvate kinase is going to make more. And if I, if I've been hydrolyzing ATP, I likely have a lot of ADP floating around, and ADP will come back and allosterically activate pyruvate kinase. And much in the same way as we talked about before, ATP is an allosteric inhibitor of pyruvate kinase. ATP inhibits pyruvate kinase allosterically. And there's one more allosteric inhibitor of pyruvate kinase, and that's NADH. That's NADH. Because if you think about it, there's, there's an enzyme in glycolysis that, that creates NADH. It's glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And also, when we, when we get to the TCA cycle, we'll find there's three enzymes in there that produce NADH. It's isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, and malate dehydrogenase. 
So ultimately, if we if we're really really undergoing catabolic catabolism or catabolic metabolism, right? We're producing a lot of NADH, and maybe we've got too much NADH, and the cell realizes that and say maybe maybe we can hold back on catabolism. So NADH is going to come back and inhibit pyruvate kinase. So if we've got if we've got enough NADH, we don't need to pr be producing any more of it, or, or at least we can produce less of it. So pyruvate kinase will be inhibited by NADH. And, gen and, and in general, these are the main allosteric regulators or allosteric effectors, as we'll call them, of glycolysis. And what we'll find is that if these enzymes are shut off, it, it tends to promote gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is basically the process of taking pyruvate and forming glucose 6-phosphate, or or it can go farther towards glucose. And when these enzymes shut off, it tends to promote environment that promotes gluconeogenesis. So I hope this video helped you understand energy charge and the allosteric regulation of glycolysis. And when we do the TCA cycle, we'll look at the allosteric regulation of those enzymes as well. See you soon.